Kicking off the list at number 10, we have Dawnbreaker. This version of Bruce Wayne first appeared in Dark Days The Casting, Issue 1, residing in, of course, the Dark Multiverse on Earth-32. The story picks up with the usual Bruce Wayne origins. His parents are both taken out by Joe Chill that night, but here, young Bruce Wayne comes into contact with a Green Lantern ring. So Bruce approaches Joe, and he's pretty pissed at this point. He's going for blood right off the bat. He ended up turning Joe Chill into bones and dust. And then when Bruce met Gordon, they got off on the wrong foot initially as well. Gordon greets him and he's like, ah, Green Lantern, wasn't sure you'd show up. And then Bruce straight up's like, hey man, don't, uh, don't threaten me. Really awkward vibes, just quick awkward vibes right off the bat, no friendship there. He was taking out Gotham's villains super quick. Each time he did it, he would scream and yell about how much his parents deserve to not be dead. He flew the penguin into outer space. That's, that's how you handle a guy right there. You take him and you go, right off planet. Okay, so with all of these brutal assassinations, the rest of the Green Lanterns knew they had to come and put a stop to this madness. Only it wasn't that easy. Bruce destroyed all of them. He executed the entire Guardians of the Universe. Beware his power, Dawnbreaker's might. And before we continue on with this list, if you want to go ahead and give us a thumbs up, that would be awesome. It helps our channel out and the studio quite a bit. You guys are super supportive. Thank you so much. Click, 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 and then we'll continue. Oops, okay, let's do it. Number nine, Speeding Bullets Batman. There's a name. This Elseworld storyline showed us what would happen if Cal els ship did not crash land in Smallville, but rather it landed in Gotham. So when the inevitable did happen and his parents were attacked and killed that night, Bruce Wayne, real named Cal el used his alien powers and unwillingly killed the robbers. His powers just came out in the form of heat vision. Toast, they didn't make it at all, no chance. And after this point, Bruce Wayne wasn't the same. He was ruthless, he had the powers of a god and so much anger, guilt, and pain inside. He had no idea what to do with this. So he would just repeat over and over, the bullets, the bullets, the bullets. Like he was in bad shape mentally. He hid from the world in his mansion of solitude and he couldn't even look at photos of anything related to death as it was super triggering. And then one night, a group of robbers tried to invade said house, but again, heat vision wins this round. Didn't make it. A little older and a little wiser, Cal el decided that now is time to use his powers to get the job done, help out, you know, be a role model. He took up the identity of the Batman, but still, just because he rocked the cape doesn't mean he was doing all the right things. For example, when Lois Lane was kicked out of Lex Luthor's limo later on, she was about to be attacked by thugs, but Batman came in and burned their flesh while splintering their bones. Or you could fly, fly them to jail or vaporize their eyes, that works too. You can vaporize their eyes, that's sure, that gets the job done. Number eight, Dark Claw. Veering out of the dark multiverse for a hot minute, we have to talk about Dark Claw. Coming from the Amalgam universe, where DC and Marvel combined powers, literally, we get a Wolverine Batman mix. He first appeared in Legends of the Dark Claw issue one back in 1996, and his origin story is a hot mess. At just age five, Logan Wayne witnessed the death of his parents, the usual stuff, but then he was sent to live with his uncle in Alberta, Canada. Better bring a jacket. It's cold. His uncle too bit the bullet after poachers ambushed him. So Logan Wayne enlisted in the Royal Canadian Air Force when he was of age, and shortly after was submitted into the Weapon X program. So much amalgam fun. There Logan got the adamantium treatment, but the Weapon X program was terminated because it was deemed a failure. Why, you ask? Logan Wayne still retained his conscience. So where to go next but to travel the world? Logan studied abroad. He studied a variety of crime fighting skills in his time. He studied criminology, forensics, martial arts, gymnastics, you name it. This guy learned all 127 major styles of combat. And yes, Thumb Wars is included. You never know, you never know. That mixed with Wolverine's abilities, I mean, you're screwed. Good game. Number seven, 1800s Batman. Batman Gotham by Gaslight, a tale of the Batman, written by Brian Augustin and brought to life by Mike Mignola. Here comes a tale from the Victorian era where Batman is hunting down Jack the Ripper. So it's 1889 and while these attacks are happening over and over, the general public is starting to whisper through the winds and talk amongst themselves in the shadows that maybe, just maybe, it's Batman who is committing these crimes because well, he's dressed like that. Pretty, pretty fair assumption. We love some Victorian drama. Let's get spooky. So we get historic killers here. We get old timey gangs. Bruce gets framed. It's an entirely new version of Batman, but it's an older take on the Cape Crusader. To see Batman purely rely on his detective skills more than anything makes for a really enjoyable story. I mean, there's no crazy gadgets or cool Batmobile that flicks him up a building. He's just like, 
I got it. I'm a detective. Let's do this. Steampunk Batman for the win. It got the feature film treatment in 2018 with Sam Liu directing. So if you're looking for an old timey superhero animated flick with Jack the Ripper, there you go. Just made your day. What do you know? Number six, Thomas Wayne. Coming from the Flashpoint storyline released back in 2011, written by Jeff Johns and Andy Kubert, Thomas Wayne, Bruce's father, was actually the one to become Batman in this timeline. Now in this universe, Bruce Wayne was the one who got shot that fateful night and he bit the bullet. The world of Flashpoint is this altered reality where Barry accidentally ends up in, where Batman is older and much, much more violent. And not so much as a detective like Bruce. See what happened was, in this alternate reality, Bruce's mother, Martha, is so traumatized that she becomes the Joker. That's why during the opening credits of Batman vs Superman, we were all pumped in the theater because Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Lauren Cohen, two amazing actors, were in such a small opening scene as Bruce's parents with zero dialogue. Now with recent set photos of Michael Keaton and the new Flash movie, we're still in for a great time, but we were so close to the best Flash movie with Jeffrey Dean Morgan as a dark Thomas Wayne. Jeffrey Dean Morgan did say on Twitter that ever since Zack Snyder walked away, his whole bit in that world has walked away with him. But we still got Michael Keaton, so it's still fine. It's good, it's good. Number five. Red Death. Coming from the Dark Multiverse, Earth 52, first appearing in Dark Days, the casting issue one, Red Death Batman used to be a hero who fought alongside Robin in his world. The events that transpired in Batman's life were taking a harder toll on him. He was watching all these sidekicks just bite the bullet, so he was desperate to find this new power, a new way to get ahead of these horrible crimes. So he looked at his world's Flash. Batman honestly believed that he could use the Speed Force better than the Flash, so he took out all the Flash's villains, stole all their tech, and then he himself fought the Flash and he was winning. He drove the two of them into the Speed Force because he had merged his Batmobile with the Cosmic Treadmill. That's always fun. And then that's when he absorbed all of Barry's powers. He did it. After Batman came back from the Speed Force, he referred to himself as Batman the Red Death where he would easily and brutally kill Gotham's rogues. All the while, Barry's consciousness is begging him to stop inside of him. Uh, it's kind of like a nightmare, this version. Definitely a nightmare. Number four, Azrael. Right after the 1993 Nightfall story, when Batman got his back broken by Bane, just absolutely wrecked, he decided to pass the Batman mantle right on to not Dick Grayson. No, instead he chose Jean-Paul Valley, AKA Azrael. His run on Batman wasn't the same as Bruce's. I mean, for starters, Azrael's methods were pretty violent and quite Quite irresponsible. In all fairness, he was capable of defeating Bane with this new tricked out bat suit, but this guy thought that he was actually an all round better Batman and a permanent successor rather than a replacement. Ooh, got news for you, pal. So once Bruce did recover, he had to force Azrael to leave the position. Even the style changes were quite drastic. Azrael made more than a few changes to the suit. Now it's black and yellow, this metallic armor, and then he added some other gadgets like claws, dual mag weapons, and of course, a cape. Just to, you know, because he's a hero, he needs a cape. Number three, Terry McGinnis. The year is 2039, and by this point, Bruce Wayne has retired from the crime fighting life. But meanwhile, Project Cadmus director Amanda Waller was out in search of a replacement, beginning with Project Batman Beyond. A major key element was using Batman's blood samples left over from his altercations, the OG Batman. That, mixed with some nanotech solutions, we now can make the DNA of Bruce Wayne. The future, how lovely. So Amanda found the Warren McGinnis household with Warren and Mary, and the couple was psychologically identical to Thomas and Martha Wayne. Perfect. So when they thought they were going in for a flu shot, they didn't know they were actually about to be the new parents of a new Batman. Amanda almost had both of them taken out to, you know, encourage the lonely road of the Cape Crusader growing up, but thankfully she scrapped that idea. Because we don't need the same origin story, Amanda. Like, give the kid a minute to figure it out. Like, you know, they don't have to. We don't need to. Turns out you can't avoid fate still because down the road in Terry's teenage years, his father ended up getting killed and Terry believed that it was actually the corrupt CEO, Derek Powers, behind all of it. So he got the help of Bruce Wayne, who was part of the merger with Derek Powers, naturally. Then after facing off against the Joker's gang, Terry realized that Bruce was in fact this original Batman. So Terry stole his bat suit and was determined to find justice himself. The Beyond suit is just awesome. Rocket boots, claws, cloaking device, the red and black, I mean, you can't get any better than that. Number two, Batman. Coming from Earth 43, Batman is, well, he's just that. He's Batman who doubles down as a vampire. Nice. We see him for the first time in Batman and Dracula Red Rain. His origins are the same for the most part, how he became Batman because of his parents, huh, all that jazz. That's the same. 
But then when he's patrolling one night, he starts to find victims all with the same injury. Their throats have been just slashed apart. Who could have done this? Why, Dracula himself, that's who. He gets help from a rogue vampire named Tanya, who was once part of Dracula's posse, and Batman is so wild, this guy willingly gets bitten by a vampire to become one, so then he can take on Dracula. Whatever it takes to get the job done, I respect that a lot. And finally, number one, Batman the God of All Knowledge. The Mobius chair made its first appearance in New Gods issue one, and the chair itself was created by Mobius, aka the Anti-Monitor. He gave the chair to Metron, but when Metron took his eye off the prize for a minute, Batman ended up becoming the God of All Knowledge for a short time. What happened was Wonder Woman grabbed Metron with her lasso, yanked him right off, and then before boom tubes were summoned or anything like that, Batman just took that chance that he had and jumped on the chair. Musical chair style. Then the Dark Knight becomes the bright light. The whole team at this time is fighting Darkseid, and Batman's just floating in the background, just trying to figure out the universe. He's just searching for solutions via the cosmic realm. It's pretty spectacular. Things took a jump to overdrive when he also received a power ring. I thought he was a good detective before, but now, I mean, that's just... That's just OP. Number 10, the Batman from Red Sun. Well, we will be focusing on Batman here from Earth 30, the reality of Superman Red Sun. It should be noted that there are more and that really the symbol of Batman is what is so powerful here. However, it all started with one man who we aren't even given the true name of. We simply know him as Batman. It was his mission to take down the man responsible for his parents' murder, Pyotr Roslov. In his attempt to get to Roslov, however, he ended up being pitted against the Soviet hero Superman, aka the Red Sun. Batman almost succeeded in defeating Superman here, but Wonder Woman unexpectedly became free of her bonds, turning the tides of the fight in Superman's favor. In the end, Batman decided to take his own life rather than be captured, blowing himself up but confessing to Superman beforehand the truth about the corrupt Roslov, and in so doing, achieved his mission. While the original Batman died, others would later take his place in the fight for justice in inspired by the stories of his heroism. Number 9, Owlman. Owlman isn't a direct alternate version of Bruce Wayne, as he's the older brother of Bruce on Earth 3, Thomas Wayne Jr., the elder son of Martha and Thomas Wayne. However, he is the equal counterpart to main continuity Bruce, considering his place on the crime syndicate as their Batman. And so for that, we're going to include him here. When Thomas was younger, he orchestrated the death of his own parents as he believed they were squandering and mismanaging his inheritance the family wealth. He even tried to get his younger brother Bruce, whom he loved dearly, to join him, but Bruce actually ended up getting cold feet and Thomas as such was forced to kill him. As Owlman, Thomas is much more dangerous as he does not have the same moral code as main continuity Batman, but is at the same level when it comes to his intellect, training, and skills. And his plans. He's pretty good at plans too. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more powerful alternate versions of Batman, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Two bat thumbs up. Do bats have thumbs? I don't think so. They have like little fingers on their wings. I think that's what they have. <laughs> little claws. Number eight, Richard Grayson. Dick Grayson is another alternate version of Batman who took up the cape and cowl following Batman's supposed death. Being that he's been trained and pretty much prepared to take up the mantle his whole life, being Batman's first Robin, Nightwing makes for a pretty powerful alternate Batman. Controversial opinion, perhaps, but despite his following in Batman's footsteps in terms of his moral code, I would say he is still a more powerful alternate than Owlman. I know some people might say, like, not having morals makes you more powerful, but I I, I digress. At one point, actually, he and Owlman teamed up and almost enacted a plot to take down the crime syndicate together. Dick comes with years of training and is known for his genius intellect, forensic skills, is a master martial artist, and would go on to become a very capable spy and develop espionage skills later on when he infiltrates Spiral. During his time as Batman, following the events and apparent death of Batman in Final Crisis, Grayson would fight alongside Damian Wayne, who acted as his sidekick Robin. Number seven. Father Bruce. You might refer to him as Bat Priest based on this art, but his real name is Father Bruce, and he is the head priest of the House of Milk and Honey, a new version of the Gather House. Father Bruce makes an appearance in Milk Wars, the Young Animals imprint crossover with the DC main world and characters. He is prominently featured in part two of the crossover in the Mother Panic and Batman special. The thing is, Father Bruce 
isn't really an alternate, but he's so cool and this story is just so bizarre and great that I thought we needed to mention him here. I actually checked this out and then I was like, man, I gotta read Mother Panic, because I believe uh, the writer of Mother Panic is the one that, that writes this comic. I'm sorry, I don't remember their name off the top of my head, but you should check it out. Father Bruce is a version of Batman who has been twisted into a priest. Here Father Bruce is in charge of a small army of Robins known as the Holy Sidekick Choir of Merciful Justice, who he teaches using his book of bat manners and divine wisdom. They drink the milk created by a mother partake, who does so in an eerie manner, she kinda creates it with her fingers, it's really weird, and have their histories rewritten by a golden machine. Bruce himself is trapped here until Mother Panic aka Violet Page manages to free him and he returns to his old self. But even in this alternate persona, he's pretty mighty. Also in this delusional, brainwash created reality, Bruce believes it is a priest crashing through his window, not a bat, that inspired him to take up the mantle of Father Bruce and become a priest. I just love that. I just love that he's like crashes through the window and he's like, who, who are you? And then he's like, I will become a priest as he like drinks the milk. <laughs> Oh, it's such a weird story, I like it. Number six, Man Bat Batman. Now I know Taylor on his part one had Batman, aka Earth 43 turned vampire bats, but I figured why not bring you another vampiric version of the hero? Because I also just really love vampires and they're powerful. This alternate version of Batman is not actually a Bruce Wayne alternate, but instead is an alternate version of Kirk Langstrom, who we know in the main continuity as Man Bat. Kirk Langstrom here was working on a cure for cancer, specifically lymphoma, which he himself suffered from. He didn't end up creating a serum that cured him, yay, but regrettably, due to its ties to bats, it also turned him into a pseudo vampire. As a vampire created by science, Langstrom became a part of the new superhero holy trinity in The Gods and Monsters. He possessed superhuman strength, durability, agility, and could fly, and also held onto his genius intellect. The one downside of his vampirism was that he did require blood in order to live. Comparable, but somewhat different to Marvel's Morbius, who is also known as a pseudo vampire. Number five, Injustice Batman. Batman in Injustice not only has the moral high ground against Superman, who becomes a villain in this reality after the death of Lois Lane and their unborn child at his own hands due to the machinations of Joker and Harley Quinn, but Batman here also possesses the super pill, or more specifically, the 5U93R pill which kind of spells super if you look at it. This pill, when ingested, allows Batman or his ally, father figure, and loyal butler, Alfred, to go toe to toe with Superman, meeting him on his level when it comes to strength and durability. Number four, the Merciless. The Merciless is like the Wonder Woman version of the Dark Knights, as each of the core members is kind of meant to be a stand in for a member of the Justice League. He initially teamed up with Diana Prince, AKA Wonder Woman, to take down Ares on his world of negative Earth 12 in the Dark Multiverse, but after doing so, was forced to take Ares' helmet before Wonder Woman could and use it to defeat her. He basically knew that Diana would not allow him to use it otherwise, and so he was like, nah, I kinda gotta take it, otherwise it won't get used. He took up her symbol in her honor and wields the power of Ares, but multiplied. He is amazingly strong and durable, can summon any weapon, influence others to anger or fighting, and is pretty much god level, so. Yeah. Number three, Super Batman. Super Batman was the name given to the Batman of Earth One when he traveled to Zur N R. In the main continuity, Zur N R was the name of Batman's alternate persona created when he witnessed the traumatic event of his parents being murdered that resides deep within his psyche. However, initially, Zur N R was the name given to a faraway planet in the golden age of Batman comics. It first appeared in issue 113 of Batman in the story Batman the Superman of Planet X. Here, Batman of Earth One is teleported a great distance to Zur N R to aid Batman, the scientist Tlano, who watched Batman from afar through a telescope and was inspired to become the Batman of his own world. So he's also Batman. However, the intergalactic threat that Tlano Batman faces here is too great, and he needs Earth One Batman's help. On this planet, Earth One Batman's unique Earth based human physiology makes him super strong, durable, and able to fly. Basically, he becomes Superman in terms of what he's capable of, which also at this time period I feel like would be pretty off the charts. Batman uses his powers to help Tolano and then is returned home afterwards and given one of Tolano's devices to keep as a memento. It doesn't work though, so it's basically just a little bit of junk that he can keep in his trophy case. 
Yay! <laughs> Number two, Dark Father. Dark Father was ultimately beaten by the superhero Holy Trinity, but only while they all kind of had a power upgrade all their own. He hails from the Dark Multiverse and is an alternate version of Bruce Wayne, who defeated Darkseid and took all his power and knowledge for himself afterward. Batman as Dark Father, as such, is a new god and also wields the anti life equation, which he uses to influence others and to imprison them, forcing them to obey him and his will. He also also has all the brilliance of main continuity Bruce and more. Number 1, Batman Who Laughs. Also known as The Darkest Night, The Batman Who Laughs is an alternate version that is a combination of Batman and Joker. He comes from the dark multiverse reality of Negative Earth 22, where he as Batman ended up killing the Joker by snapping his neck after being pushed to the brink by the villain who was dying anyways admittedly. When he did so, however, he became infected by Joker venom that was released by this very final action. After becoming infected, Bruce went insane and had most of his Bat family killed, except for his biological son, Damian Wayne, who joined his side. Batman Who Laughs would go on to become super powerful after acquiring the powers of Dr. Manhattan when he had his brain transplanted into the body of the Dr. Manhattan Batman alternate. The Darkest Knight even before this power upgrade was already pretty powerful because one, he was super popular, which always gives characters power, and two, he was a mentally ill genius, which made him extremely deadly and dangerous to take on and kinda unpredictable. He also often fought against the superheroes he came up against with dark metal. In some cases, managing to infect them and in so doing, recruit them to his own dark army. Plus, he's got all those dark knights, so that's just another thing. Kicking off the list at number 10. Bat Baby. We get a grown Robin and a baby Batman. What a treat. Making his first little baby steps in Batman issue 147. In fact, this is the 600th time Batman appeared in comics. So it was a pretty big deal at the time. And to this day, it's known as one of the most ridiculous comic books of all time. And I have to agree. It says story of the year on the cover and that is not a lie. So what in the baby genius is happening here? Well, Nails Finney and his gang, including Garth, the renegade scientist, made a shrink ray. And it works like a charm, evidently. The thing is, it only shrank him. He wasn't sitting around all day filling his diaper and licking door handles. No, he had the same strength as regular size B-Man plus the brains. So he packed quite a punch in a little body. And he was okay with it too. He like kind of leaned into the lifestyle a bit. He said if Gangland is calling him a baby, then he might as well dress like a baby too. Black jorts, little cape, he got the job done. Whatever it took. Number 9. Bizarro Batman. Created by Bizarro Number 1 as a Batman duplicate, the world's worst detective made his first comic book appearance in World's Finest, issue 156. I was going to use Bizarro Batman as number 10, but like Bat Baby? I had to. He's a baby! Come on! I love Bizarro Batman. He speaks and thinks the exact opposite of Batman's true intentions. Like other Bizarros, their main weakness is blue kryptonite, an artificial isotope. Perhaps one of the best slash worst features of this version of Batman has to be the useless utility belt. He did not have gadgets that saved the day stored in there. No, he had cigarette butts, chewing gum that, yes, had already been chewed. Just a sticky mess in one of those. He had bottle caps, rusty nails, ashes, cigar ashes. And banana peels. Okay, like the nails and the banana peel, sure. I can maybe see like a Home Alone type trap coming from this guy. I wouldn't say the belt is totally useless, just really smelly. And before we continue on with this list, if you want to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, that would be so great. We'd actually love that here, wouldn't we, Chris? We totally would. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Now let's get right back to this alternate Batman list. Number eight, Prohibition Batman. Elliot Ness made his first appearance in Batman's Scar of the Bat, and he was a federal agent. His primary target is the one and only Al Capone. So this takes place during, of course, the Prohibition era in Chicago, and Elliot was part of a team referred to as the Untouchables, where he would stand alongside Danny Rasher, Frank Basile, and George Koken. Now the best part of this comic isn't the fact that Batman is carrying a Tommy gun on the cover, it's, I mean that's close, but Elliot Ness was a real person in real history. The Untouchables were real. Back in 1903, Elliot Ness led this team. He didn't have a cape, but he did have a beautiful comb over. Imagine if he knew that he became Batman in an alternate reality. I wonder if he read the early issues. Wild, food for thought. Number seven, Sir William. This one comes straight from Earth 9. So back in 1997, DC Comics launched Tangent Comics, which was a new take on our hero's backstory. 
Always a good time. So as you guessed from the name, Sir William, yes, this Batman was straight out of the Arthurian times. Sir William was a knight of King Arthur's round table, but things got a little messy once Morgan Le Fay seduced him and convinced him to fight King Arthur using her magic. So he was confined to his own castle. Ugh, quite the punishment. Must be rough. Hey, here's your own castle, Sir William. Hope you like stargazing. And that's it. And candles. That's the weird thing about castles. They're kind of boring. They're beautiful, but definitely boring. Sir William did have a solution, however. He discovered that he had the ability to project his spirit into his armor and then have that walk free. What an ultimate gift. Could you imagine that as an excuse? Hey guys, sorry I'm late. My spirit got stuck in traffic. What'd I miss? Number six, Batman the Wild. This version's wild. Making his first appearance in Batman Dark Joker the Wild back in 1994, this version is... I mean, look at him. He's a literal monster, and as far as the miniseries go, it's pretty trippy. See, Batman was the child of two sorcerers this time around, Magister and Lalandra, and when he was created, he was created purely to take down their greatest foe, the Dark Joker. Very uh, Harry Potter vibes going on here. In usual Batman fashion, his parents got wiped out at a young age, but instead of beatboxing in an empty mansion, he grew up in solitude as a monster living in the wilderness. Batman discovered that he has an older sister, Cerisa, so she showed shows him the ropes, she cultured him, and that's about all she had the chance to do as the Dark Joker took her out as well. Tragedy in any universe for this guy. The wild monster Batman ended up hucking Dark Joker out of a window, of course screaming to his deceased family all the while. And he scratched his mouth, that's actually how he got those scars, from Batman's dirty nails. Number five, Batmouse. Coming from the JLA, of course meaning just a lot of animals, we meet the Cape Crusader from Earth C Minus, and it's perhaps one of the cutest versions of Batman, so I had to include him with Bat Baby aside. He's also pretty cute. You can find Batmouse go against the also adorable Joker Pig and Captain Carrot and his amazing zoo crew, issue 14. What a great name, Captain Carrot, that's lovely. The whole thing obviously is fun and games, especially with the first page, we see Wonder Wabbit, Green Lampkin, and next to Batmouse is this trusty sidekick, Boyd the Robin Wonder. How cute! Now the best part is that this is one of the few alternate universes to survive Crisis on Infinite Earths. So he's still out there. A silent guardian, a watchful protector, a dark knight who's also a mouse. Number four, Thrill Killer. Back in 1997, we got a pretty neat what if scenario in DC Comics. Thrill Killer issue one, we find Bruce Wayne on Earth 37 and his parents were actually killed by their servants at this time around. So there's no fortune to fall back on afterwards. The whole operation just collapsed in on itself. So Bruce now focused on law enforcement, eventually becoming a detective for Gotham City Police Department. He was one of the few good ones. He got this case handed to him where he had to track down and capture Batgirl and Robin. This case was his last though due to the fact that he ended up being framed for the death of Selina Kyle. Bianca Steeplechase framed him, also amazing last name. So he became a fugitive after this. Bruce did eventually join Batgirl as Batman and then they attacked the mob, all that good stuff. But after Steeplechase was taken down, Bruce was appointed commissioner, retiring the Batman side of his life. Number three, emo Batman. Coming from the Elseworlds 80 page giant issue one back in 1999, Bruce Wayne was a moody teen full of angst and of course, a love and lust for pop music, like all of us. He was one of the members of the group The Pennyworths who was discovered by Lex Luthor himself and then they signed with Lex Records. How sick. Lex ended up dropping the group because Bruce was getting a little lost in the sauce. Some narcotic use was keeping him in a dark place. You gotta keep it clean, Bruce. How else are you going to play at Coachella? Think, I already bought my tickets, man. Rain or shine. Number two, Black Masterpiece Batman. Black Masterpiece is an Elseworlds story as well, and it's perhaps one of my favorite versions. Elseworlds Annual Issue 18, Black Masterpiece shows us a fun alternate past where the young apprentice of Leonardo da Vinci became the first ever Batman. The woman posing for the Mona Lisa, she ends up getting kidnapped, mid pose. She's like, what? She ends up getting kidnapped, and it's a fun story because it's current day, and then all of a sudden it's old timey Batman. Nice little back and forth. So Bruce Wayne tracking down stolen artwork sounds like a boring time, but the 1994 classic is all but. 
Number one, Leatherwing. The captain of the Flying Fox, a 17th century privateer making his first swashbuckle in Detective Comics Annual Issue 7. Leatherwing is a pirate version of Batman, not a pirated version, a literal pirate version of him. How great does that sound right off the bat? This dude resides in the barnacle-filled Earth 494, and Captain Leatherwing sailed the seas with Alfred, or sorry, his first mate Alfredo, and soon met Robin Redblade, prince of the urchins and bloody terror of the Kingston docks. Look, Batman's British, Alfred Alfredo is an Italian dude who constantly disagrees with him. And yes, to answer your burning question, Leatherwing fights with a sword. Even though his parents were both killed by a sword, odd little parallel there. The Flying Fox, the ship, is actually a nod to Zorro, who in regular continuity was an influence on Bruce Wayne. Zorro is Spanish for fox, so the Flying Fox, the Flying... You got it. If you loved this read, you must check out the follow-up, also written by Chuck Dixon. It's called The Blade of Leatherwing, featuring Capitana Felina in the spotlight this time around, and Admiral Cobblepot as the new antagonist. Just blast the Pirates of the Caribbean theme song while you read this, and you're gonna have the best time ever. I promise.